The unwatchables for round two is actually a round one game from 1900 between St Kilda and Melbourne at the Junction Oval. Now, this game is notable purely because it was St Kilda's first VFL win after three years in the competition. So they're an interesting um, case early on. There's a lot of explanations online for why St Kilda were included in the competition. One of them was their proximity to the city. The second one, which I think is incorrect but gets a big run on Reddit, is that the Junction Oval is very picturesque, which is strange because it's not that pretty. Um, but they basically went 1897, 1898 and 1899 without a win. And if you kind of read the papers from that time, they were only ever likely to beat Carlton, which means it's an absolute surprise that they knocked off Melbourne. They did it in truly ridiculous fashion. It's one of only three results in VFL, AFL history decided by a protest. So after the three-quarter time siren, Melbourne's captain kicked an erroneous behind, as it was described in the paper which was subsequently scrubbed off at um, VFL committee on Thursday night. They rewarded the win. I don't know if they even got to celebrate it um, because obviously it being awarded four days after the game kind of would have stifled that. So there are a lot of unknown questions. I don't know if they sung the song. I just, I don't know. So I've got a couple of questions to do with that game first. So obviously they protested after the result and then there was no TV footage because it was 1900. They didn't even have a siren loud enough for the umpire to hear it. You're the Melbourne delegate that get asked to go to the tribunal for the protest. Do you just roll with it like the Melbourne people did and say, yeah, yeah, it was kicked after the siren, we'll cop the loss? Or do you just plead ignorance and take the points? I guess the other question is, and this is kind of, you know, a lot of this, so a lot of the reports about St Kilda were that they were unfit They didn't take football very seriously at all. Um, And I kind of wonder in 1900 whether, like this is three years of the competition for the start of the fourth season. So how seriously at this point, like it's not like the media where Robbo's like, oh no, if I was Melbourne, I'd just go in and sit there and take the four points. Like was anyone actually taking it that seriously or were they more concerned about being like good blokes, good people and being cordial in that era? Well, I could be speculating. and The whole thing made not much sense at all. And so the reason why I set you up with that question is that Melbourne won the premiership that year, but they finished sixth out of eight teams. <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> and so yeah. what, what happened in, in the first three seasons of the year is they used this system where you play everyone twice, so 14 games, and then you got split into sections, first, third, fifth, and seventh are in section A, second, fourth, sixth, and eighth are in section B. So finishing second means you get the worst ranked teams. So that's actually a benefit to finish second. Then you play each other once in those sections. And then there's this super complicated final system where, so whoever won, whoever finished top of the ladder in the regular season of 14 games is declared the minor premier. Then you play the sectionals. You get a champion of uh, section A, champion of section B. They play off in the sectional game. Now, if the minor premier is also the winner of that sectional game, they win the grand final. If the minor premier loses that game, then they play the game again as like a challenge game. Mm. If the minor premier wasn't in that game, then the winner of the sectional game plays the minor premier, but only if they got more than eight points in the sectional games. And if... The minor premier didn't win more than two games in the sectionals. Then the winner of the sectional game is the is the major premier. And I thought the final five was complicated. <laughs> and so, really, the reason why Melbourne just let St Kilda have the points is because it didn't matter where they finished. If you won three games in the sectionals and then won the next game, you most likely play in the grand final. So, 1897, they did it. It was minor premier because it was Essendon. Yeah. And then from there, they created finals. Yeah. And the but that, this, is, so this is why, yeah. And this is why in AFL, they always, we're one of the only sports that refers to a grand final. 
mm. as opposed to a final because the final used to be a match and then the minor premier still had the right to challenge, yes. which would then be the grand the final, grand final. Which yes. is a lot of people don't because now actually in football we don't really have a grand final, we just have a final. Mm. But we still kind of refer to I guess go to final. that. Yeah, the traditional lingo. So yeah, you're right. I mean, if that's probably why when they all went to the tribunal and all sat there, Melbourne probably went, "Oh, you haven't won a game in three years. We may as well give you one." Yeah. Um, and so they did. The mm-hmm. most stellar part of this is being so diabolical. They had a guy called Ted Hall, who I've spent far too much time chasing down and researching, who missed this game. He played all of the first three seasons, virtually played every game, and then quit at the start of 1900 to umpire. So he was umpiring Geelong and Collingwood. Um, uh, in round two, I think, not actually in round one, but he stopped playing to umpire, um, became, I think, the second person to do that in the VFL AFL history. Um, he sucked at umpiring, so he came back to playing at round five, but missed the first win. And consequently, he ended up playing 73 games for one win in his VFL AFL career, largely because he missed this game. Mm. And so if he hadn't missed this game, he would have an infinitely better win-loss percentage that would put him on a parallel with all the other St Kilda players, but because he missed this game, he is outright the worst by a decent margin. It's quite, it's quite ridiculous. But I guess the other thing when you try and kind of research a lot of this stuff is that the information is so scant. Like if you look on um, footy tables, like they don't even have the, the full 22 or 20 or whatever it was for both sides on that particular um, day. So there's a lot of... Um, difficulty in actually piecing together kind of exact passages of events. It's pretty, um, pretty remarkable. And you do end up wasting an enormous amount of time on um, Trove and various other sources if you want to track any of it. 